Hey, this is Jim with Imperial Tool. Thought you guys might like to uh, take a look here at the uh, wireless probes. I just got these going. Um, we have uh, a couple different styles here. This is a temperature humidity probe. And uh, you can see here we've got uh, five magnets that hold that probe in to the ductwork. So if you have uh, sheet metal ductwork, put that in and it'll hold right in there for you. These are Zigbee probes. I have one in supply and one in return. Uh, when it returns up here, you can ignore the color of the LEDs right now. Those are just uh, beta probes, so we're just doing some testing. One thing that's real important when you're using the probes is you want to make sure that you're, you know, plenty far away from the evaporator coil so that you get uh, uh, a real good sampling of the mixture of the air. And uh, we got these running right now. Now this is really cool because these are Zigbee mesh, mesh networks. So literally, uh, once you pair the probes to the manifold, all you have to do is turn them on. And they're synced up every time. There is no pairing. There is no uh, screwing around with it. The mesh network will figure its own way out and uh, back to the unit the quickest way, whether it's directly back or probe to probe. So let's go outside and see what this guy's doing. All right, I ran upstairs real quick to get the airflow reading, and you can see we're at 1078. If you watched any of my other videos, you know that uh, when we measure the airflow, uh, it's pretty much spot on with the. Uh, with my uh, vein measurement or my hot wire measurement, so we're good here. I'm gonna go out, put that into the unit, and uh, we'll go out and see what's going on with the gauges. All right, so we're out here at the condensing unit, and uh, just to, to show you what we did real quick, I went through and uh, profiled the system. So I'm gonna show you the profiling again, and uh, we're gonna just edit the current profile so you can see how I have its profile. Oops, we'll hit back bump the button there so I have it I have it set up here for 410A air conditioning standard TXV 13 to 16 sear and a high efficiency evaporator coil target subcooling 10 and 17 real real easy to set up I went back in here and uh, in my user inputs What I put in is my airflow at 1078 CFM, my nominal three ton system. I put in my voltages to ground and my current, and uh, then my, uh, my ECM 6.7 amps, and set all that up. So that was all done, and then I just hit submit here and submitted that information. All right, so got the, uh, the amp probe there, and uh, a couple of uh, the suction and liquid line hooked up to the I manifold, so you can just see what we got hooked up here. And the whole thing took, you know, literally uh, a couple seconds to set up. It actually took longer for the unit to settle out by a long shot than it did to settle up. Than it did to settle up. Now I'm going to show you a couple things here, and right away uh, you can see I have the reading streaming in for my wireless probes. So from inside, I'm getting every time you see one of these flash here, I'm getting an updated reading for return air wet bulb dry bulb, supply air dry bulb, and wet bulb from the Zigbee mesh network. Those flash like that because uh, it's just, as the data comes in, it updates automatically, and you can see that everything is fairly stable. One thing I will show you here is my return air dry bulb in the house is down to 67, so it's, it's pretty cool in the house, uh, and uh, there's just not a lot of load out here today. It's, it's, it's not very cold. But what's cool is, uh, you can see my suction pressure is nice and stable, my head pressure is nice and stable. I'm going to go ahead and just flip over here to my uh, superheat and subcooling and hit submit. And you can see that both those are, are rock solid. So even though there's pretty low load, the TXV is uh, doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And uh, everything is operating within the parameters. Uh, low discharge line temperature simply because uh, we don't have a lot of load out here. Let's see what our outdoor air temperature is here real quick. Our outdoor air is 71 degrees. It's not much warmer than that in the house. And uh, you can see everything on the bottom here is coming in real time. Makes it very easy to troubleshoot. These indicators are driven off of the outdoor air temperature. Drives the, uh, the head pressure requirement. Indoor air temperature is driven by the... Uh, excuse me, the, the low side is driven by the return air dry bulb wet bulb, okay? And you can see that those are um, uh, coming in in real time. 
Now, again, in real time here, what we have right on the bottom of the I-manifold display is our BTU. So we're doing 2.6 ones of cooling, 2.6 tons, 31,266 BTUs at 13.10 EER. The 9.03 KW is just simply beat up, uh, BTUs turned to uh, kilowatts, uh, just the metric reading of that. You can see that's updating in real time as we go. Now, if you remember, I told you I have my, uh, my system, actually uh, a couple of things here that we need to know, well, why are we running 30,000 BTUs? Because if you look here on the label, what you'll see is this is a three ton system, 036, RARL 036. Well, there's two reasons. Number one reason is that I have my airflow drop down 10%. It's at 1078, and I have it at 1078 to, to dehumidify better here because I'm in Ohio. The other thing is I have this extremely low return air uh, dry bulb temperature, and that is going to significantly impact the capacity, and that's why we're seeing that low capacity. Now, in real time, also, if I go to system performance, I can see, and, and here's, you know, I should have 1200 CFM nominal when I have 1078. You can see here my actual tonnage in real time, my nominal, my BTUs per hour, my sensible, my latent. And if you watch those numbers here, uh, we should see those uh, change if, if, if the probes aren't so stable inside. But those, are, there they want to update it. <laughs> They'll update in real time as the load conditions change. So you can see here my sensible heat ratio, my bypass factor, my gallons per hour of dehumidification at, at 0.92 uh, gallons, so just under a gallon per hour of dehumidification. You can see my actual temperature split is 19.8 degrees, <laughs> but my target is simply too low to be calculated because it's so cold in the house. And then you can see my uh, condenser watts, air handler, and EER running right at about 13.0 on the EER. Uh, also, we're picking up our, our altitude, approximate altitude, and this is uh, based off the barometric pressure sensor that's built into the I-manifold that also corrects the, uh, uh, the pressure transducers on there. So you can see all this information in real time, extremely powerful, extremely easy to use. Um, it's, this is awesome information for technicians and for your customers. And, you know, right now, uh, just of interest here, let's see if it kicks out a flag on troubleshooting because I pretty much guarantee it will just because I know it's too, so cold in the house. So we'll turn on troubleshooting and you can see right away we get the flag, something's wrong. Well, what's wrong? System measurements indicate low evaporator load. Notice though, everything's green. Everything's green here because the suction pressure is where it should be, the high pressure is where it should be, the superheat and subcooling are right where they should be. We just have low load. And that low load, if we tap that, is due to the low uh, evaporator temperature. Now this is, and I'm surprised it's not happening, but this is where we typically see our TXV hunting because of the low load. This one just seems to be controlling really well. So we can tap that, yep, hit continue, sorry. We'll tap this, get rid of the, uh, get rid of the flag, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn troubleshooting back off just so we don't have to look at it here. And uh, you know, that gives you a really good idea of the, what the I-Manifold can do, what it can calculate in real time. Uh, again, I think uh, you know, there's not too much more that uh, anybody could want out of a product uh, than we have right here. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the video. But uh, I just wanted to show you what we're doing with the wireless probes and uh, how that data comes in. And you, know, you can see I've got all this data. I didn't have to go back into the house one single time to uh, to see what my return air dry bulb is doing, my wet bulb is doing, to recalculate uh, target superheat if I would have had a fixed metering device. All the information is right here at my fingertips and um, very, very slick and easy to use. Okay, a little little bit of bonus footage here. Uh, just wanted to show you guys something I thought was pretty cool. Uh, I came in here and shut off the thermostat and, and uh, watched how quickly the BTUs diminished. And uh, so I just started the system back up again. You could see when it first started, it was down to, to nothing. And I'm just standing inside here in the house next to the thermostat here, uh, you know, uh, fiddling with this thing. So 
just to give you an idea of what's going on here. But you can see now we're up to 20,000 BTUs of cooling. And uh, you really couldn't see it outside in the other video simply because uh, those temperatures and stuff weren't coming in as fast or changing that dynamically. Now you can see, you know, even though we're inside here, it's still updating, uh, again, from the wireless probes. That's going to the I-manifold and then coming from the I-manifold to Bluetooth via to the smart pad here, so to the tablet. So that's what we're doing. And uh, you can see we're up to 24,700 BTUs of cooling. So what I want you to notice is a couple different things. Number one is it takes time for a system to start producing its full cooling. And this is what uh, SEER is about. SEER rating is about the amount of time it takes for the system to reach its, uh, its full cooling. So it's been running a minute and uh, about 26 seconds off my video here. And uh, you can see we're up to 29,000 BTUs. Uh, almost up to where we were at before. We're 2.47 tons on a 3-ton unit, 2.5 tons. And now you can see that's sort of settling out there. Um, the other thing you'll see here is my superheat. Now my valve is hunting a little bit. Uh, it's down uh, to about 4 degrees of superheat down below the target. Now it's coming back up again. So it is uh, bouncing around a little bit. Just cool to see that. And we're up to 2.53 and 30,000 BTUs. And... Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and shut this off once just to give you an idea how quickly things, uh, things change. You still working on the video? Yeah, then? I'm still working on the video. All right, so I just uh, shut the thermostat off, and the system takes just a second. Okay, it just shut off now. And we'll watch how fast this thing uh, starts dropping. So you can see uh, very quickly when the uh, when system starts to settle out, we start losing that cooling. Now it's going to hang around just a minute because the coils the coil is still cold. It's still got cold refrigerant in there, and but as that refrigerant uh, starts to warm up, the cooling capacity starts to drop off and uh, the system goes back into, uh, you know, into doing basically nothing.